Welcome to our panel. We are now at the end of our RBC training ground national final. We've got our winners, we've got our RBC Olympians, and we're all here to chop it up and talk about some of the things that some of the athletes want to know and some of the things that our RBC Olympians want to pass on. It's a big moment for these guys. Uh, a lot of things are going to change for them as far as their funding, as far as their notoriety, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool for them to get some feedback from some national team members as well as some people who have been uh, in the RBC training program and pivoted it into some success moving forward. So, Ian. You are a man of few words, as we've found out before, which is fine. There's a lot of value in those few words. Yeah. But coming into this event, did you expect to have the success you had today? No, not really. I just wanted to try my best, and it went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Catherine, you came in here, and you've, you're, you're a champion now. So moving forward, how are you going to use this uh, to, you know, you know, start a career in whatever sport you may want to do? Or have you thought about how you're going to use this moving forward? Um, can I speak in French? <laughs> sure, you could speak in you could speak in French, okay. but if you could do it in English as well, that would be best, ideally. Can okay. you do that for us? Um, I can try. Okay. Um, I did the um, better result. That Mike, Mike, your mouth. Oh, I I did the better uh, result that the last year, so it was very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah. You know, it was very exciting. I think it was exciting for her. It was yeah. exciting for both of them. Moving forward, you guys are going to get so much TV time and so much camera time. This stuff's going to be easier moving forward. Your English is going to be better than mine. <laughs> so I'm assuming that you'd want to know from some national team members, you know, what to look forward to with the new success. So, you know, let me ask Charles first off. Um, you know, when you had won the competition, you know, how did you use this to pivot into something, some sort of success moving forward? Uh, I mean, it. I mean, it helps me travel around, helps keep me fed and fueled to train. So it's. I mean, it's a huge part in just being an or an athlete at all, let alone as part of the national team. But uh, yeah, the funding and the support and having RBC back you, it just it, it gives you that confidence to go out and be like, yeah, like I got a big company behind my back. They're supporting me. I got, I got here. You know what? I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna I'm gonna represent the company well. That's what you want. For sure, Avila, literally. 10 minutes after I spoke to you, your record in the endurance event had gotten broken. Oh. Now, I'm not sure. <laughs> there must be some mixed emotions there. Obviously, you like your record and wanted it to be there for a long time. But how cool is it to see you know, the level of athleticism growing in the RBC training ground program? Uh, yeah, I think it's really exciting. I mean, obviously, part of me was like, ah, maybe I should just get on the bike and you know, redo it because I'm competitive. And that's what makes me an athlete. Um, but I thought it was really exciting. and. It made me pretty proud, especially that um, these people that were beating it had to do with rowing, and that was just, that was very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, you've been a part of the program for a while. You know the ups and downs, you know some of the positives, some of the negatives, even though there's very few negatives from a program like this. I wish there was something like this when I was around. Mm -hmm. So what would it have been like for you to have a program like this around when you were an upcoming athlete? I think if I had RBC training ground, if it was around when I was an athlete, man, I would have been going to training camps, I would have been able to pay my coach. I wouldn't have been on that mac and cheese diet. I find that like having this kind of funding can propel you. The advice I would give to you guys is use it wisely. Um, reach out to your network. You got Charles here. You got Avalon. You got myself. We are here to see you succeed. I wish I had a network like that, but you guys have us here. You know, you're kind of leading me into my next question um, because I was kind of curious what kind of advice everyone would give to these athletes now that they have this. Uh, eyes are going to be on them a little bit more. Uh, the potential seen, they're seeing the potential in themselves. So what advice would you give to them moving forward? Uh, personally, I found it pretty nerve wracking. You know, you start seeing your face everywhere. You even get, you know, the odd like teasing and stuff. But just remember that, you know, you're on your own personal path and it, whatever gets you there gets you there and just have fun with it you know don't take it too seriously everyone realistically is cheering you on and you do have a massive support group now that really wants to see you succeed so just rely on that and just have fun Charles you got any questions for the winners did you think you'd be here on TV right now <laughs> winning <laughs> do you think you'd be here right now when you when you showed up today did you think this is what it would all come down to when you showed up this morning I'll no? give me the mic give me the mic no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Um, um. No. I, I didn't know if I'd make it past the qualifier event. Honestly, like, 
this is pretty nice. But I mean, you're here now. Obviously, your hard work's paid off, so you guys must both feel really proud. And I mean, obviously, the proof's in the pudding. You guys are here, and you deserve it. Good job. Yeah, thank you. you know, I think that <clears throat> the popularity of the uh, the event is growing, which is good. And moving forward, this, look at how big this was. It's getting bigger and bigger and really prestigious. So I'm curious how you guys even heard about the program. How did you hear about this event? Yeah, like uh, my rowing coach told me about it a couple of years ago, and I thought about it and decided to do it, try to get some funding. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. How did you hear about it? Um, on internet. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming both of you want to be Olympians. Yeah. Okay. So with our RBC Olympians here, just so you know, I'm an Olympian. <laughs> what kind of questions would you have? as far as how you can get there or something you should do, or something you should eat or something you should buy or, you know, something that could take you on the path to get you to the Olympics and maybe even on the podium like you were today. What kind of question would you have? Um, Something's going to come to you as soon as you walk into your hotel room, but try and think of something right now. Okay. Um, I don't know. I could give you some advice. Oh, yeah, sure, yes. I mean... It's pretty simple. I mean, it's a yes or no question every morning when you wake up. I know, I mean, you guys are both interested in rowing, and uh, we wake up at, like, some pretty rough hours during the day. And it's simple. It's just a yes or no question every single day. Like, yes, I'm going to go do this, or no. And as soon as you start saying no, that, like, that's okay. But, I mean, that's when you know maybe it's time to move on. But as long as you're saying yes every day, just keep showing up. Keep working hard. Keep your nose to the ground. Keep your head, you know, level. Don't get too big. But, yeah, just stay humble and, and keep going. Just keep showing up. Keep working hard. Have you guys thought of doing any other sports? Not really, no. So you're rowing for sure. Yeah, I'll be rowing. Um, how do you guys like balance all like the training and, and the school aspect as well? How oh, hard do you guys find that? Great question. Great That's question. a really, really good question. question. So I went to school in Calgary, went through the, the CIS system, and like I had a lot of my, my biggest successes while in school. I would say that I would balance it. Just it just comes down to straight organization and communication. So with your coach, you know, as you guys uh, get connected with your NSOs, it's so important to have an open line of communication. You know, if you got a midterm, you got to let them know you got a midterm. You shouldn't be, uh, you know, grinding the super hard in a training session before that day. But I think it's just like it's it's that and being realistic. It's okay sometimes to take a rest day when you do have school. Most athletes who are at the highest of highest caliber are focused purely on their craft, which is, you know, the Olympics. You guys are in a different situation. So I would, I would argue just focus um, on, on what you can control, which is your school, which is uh, your sport, and stay organized. One of the bonuses actually of doing both is that when you don't have to do one anymore, it's so much easier. So you're doing school and yeah, athletics. Yeah. So when you don't have to worry about school anymore, when you focus on only rowing, you're going to be an amazing rower. And when you're done and you only have to focus on work, it's going to be easy to you. So you're actually pushing yourself beyond your limits right now. And afterwards, it's going to seem pretty easy. You know? um, so to sum it up, what I want to do is I got to be honest. I want to know what you're going to do with the money. First off, what are you, you, you going to do with the money? I don't know what, what you're thinking of. First off, what are you going to do with the money that you know that you're going to be getting now? Oh, you're, you, you're ready to answer this one right away, huh? Um, I will pay my apartment um, because uh, I live in Knowlton for the rowing. So uh, it's very uh, expensive for my parents. So um, this and the gas. The gas? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the competitions, because in rowing, it's expensive, too. So, uh, yeah. Your English is much better than you said. <laughs> You're selling yourself short. What about you? Um, I'm going to be going to the National Rowing Championship later this month. And so it just helped me cover the cost of that, all the travel expenses and all of that. So Perfect. Yeah, that'll be good. Perfect. Sam, I'm interested. You've been to a bunch of these events. How does this one compare to the rest? And, you know, how do you feel about the program moving forward? I think the program moving forward, there's a lot of amazing things that are in store. Seeing this being the first national final for RBC Training Ground and seeing even the, you, you look at the colors, you look at how this is decorated, you know this is a serious event. It's no more regional, it's, it's everybody's game. You got people from Ontario, Alberta, BC, and, and to say that you are a national champion 
is an amazing feeling. So I think going forward, if there are more national championships here, you know, I want to be there. This is good. You guys are in good company, and you should be so, so, so incredibly proud. Yeah, for sure. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you to our, our RBC Olympians for joining us. This is my first time at this event, and I want to be a part of many more. It was a great event. The only thing I didn't like about the event was the fact that it wasn't around when I was competing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would have loved for this to be around. But moving forward with the partnership with CBC, it's going to be a great thing. And RBC training, oh, rbctrainingground.ca if you want to learn more about the event and also moving forward uh, to see more events. And actually, if you want to get some other people involved. All right. uh, and yeah, that's going to sum everything up for us here. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you guys as well. And uh, thanks for having me here.